Hey, seventh graders, we are working on our important person essay today. Woohoo! And we're going to be working on some revising. So I have mine here. This is my cover page. You can see, oh, I didn't change my last name. That's from before. Whoops. Um, I've got my class, which also has to change. Whoops. This is a good time to change up things like that, huh, when I'm revising. My, the course that I'm in, the class period, the date I wrote this, so this is uh, a little old. I'm due for a good revision probably by now, huh? I gave it a title, My Magnificent Brother. If you don't have a title yet, you can take a moment to think about a creative title. You can also um, title it the full name of your person. That's a great title for it. Let's not call it Important Person Essay. That is not as exciting. So at least give us the name of the person. Um, if you can come up with a creative title, that'd be great too. Um, and you will need a picture of your person. You're going to find I have two. You only have to have one, but you're welcome to put more than one if you like. Um, this is me and my brother at Mayfest. Because he was cool like that. Um, so if you did want to have a title page, um, which I do recommend, this would be a great place where you could make the, the title bigger and, and, and things like that. It'll still need to be Times New Roman, but you could make it a larger size if you wanted to and that would be fine um, if you wanted to pause and take note of what's on the cover page my photograph my title all this information down here that would be great and then when you're ready you can unpause moving on to my actual essay here's my second picture right we are going to be looking at the revision sheet so coach Rain gave you one of these start by putting your name at the top make sure you put your first and last name because you're a big fancy seventh grader um, today's date which I think is the 28th, that sounds right. Oh, maybe it's the 29th. Check, look on your iPad. Um, and either E or F period, depending on which class you're in, okay? And then I want you to take a look here. It says, on my honor, I promise that I did not let another student, parent, or tutor revise my essay. I went through the steps of revision myself. So you're promising me that this is entirely your work. It's not someone else's work, okay? Um, and you do need to sign that. Okay. That's you promising that this is all your work. You didn't let anybody else work on it with you. Okay. And that is the expectation. This is entirely your work. Moving on. Our first step is show, not tell. It says find your CDs. Are they showing your reader what happened or telling what happened? Add sensory details, sight, taste, touch, sound, smell to make your concrete details come to life. So I have picked up my uh, paper quick. Um, now that I've got it, I noticed something really quick, so I'm gonna note that. Anytime I notice something, it's totally fine to just make a quick note that I wanna make this times New Roman, size 12, that way I don't forget later, right? Totally fine to do that. But now I'm gonna jump back to what I was working on, which is concrete details. I'm gonna jump down to my body paragraph. I'm just gonna look at this one body paragraph uh, and I'm finding my concrete detail. I see this transition here to help me indicate that's where that is. For example, when I played t-ball, I always stepped too far when I batted and missed the ball. He decided the best way to fix this was to tie my feet together with the belt from his bathrobe and practice until I got it right. I fell a few times, but everyone noticed my improvement at the next game. This isn't bad. It tells a good story. It's kind of cute, right? Her brother tried her feet together. That's so adorable. Yay. But I can do better. I can always make things better. So for instance, here, when I say and miss the ball, I'm talking about stepping too far and what would happen. Well, when I step too far, what would really happen is my bat would smash into the T. Because that's what happened. I stepped too far, my bat would go too low, it hit the T instead, right? So instead of saying just missing the ball, my bat would smash into the T, making a loud funk. And the ball would throw up a cloud of red dust as it 
What's the word I want? Fell isn't good. I'm going to write fell, but I'm going to underline it to remember to look at it later and put a different word there that's better as it fell to the ground. That's more descriptive, isn't it? It's told me a lot more. It's got a lot more details. And I would continue to do that with my story. So this is one example of what I would do. This isn't the only place I would change something. It's okay to change lots of things. That's why we're revising. So look for places where you said things that were really plain. And instead of just saying, I missed the ball, I'm gonna give lots of great sensory details. I have a sound here, that thunk, smash, that's a lot more descriptive. Um, I talk about what you would see, the cloud of red dust coming up, because in a softball field, right, it's that red Texas clay, and just like, it gets dry and dusty, and the ball hits it, and there's just a big cloud of dust. Once I've gone through my whole paper and looked at every concrete detail, which you're gonna pause and do right now, Welcome back. Hopefully you've finished step number one and you're going to go on to number two, beginning words. Grab a pink highlighter or marker or pen or colored pencil. Really anything pink is fine. Highlight the first word in each sentence. Do you use the same words to begin your sentences over and over again? Try adding a beginning adjective or adverb or a sentence starting word like a transition. Now look at how long your sentences are. Do you have a lot of short sentences or many long cumbersome sentences? An essay should have a mix of both. Mix up your sentence length to help you keep your reader interested. Now this has two steps, and so something I'm going to do to help me make sure I do both is I'm going to put little boxes here, right? Um, I'm going to mark pink highlighter, so I remember this was the step with the pink highlighter. I need to find the first words. All right, so here I go. Have, when, because, buddy, he, my. Okay, so I'm taking a look at this. And I'm noticing that I have, a, in this first paragraph, I have a pretty good balance of lengths of sentences. I have one that takes up a line and a half here, and just half a line, and then a whole line, and then most of a line, and over. So it's a pretty good balance. I might be able to make it a little bit better, but I feel like for the most part, none of my sentences are like super long and hard to follow. I also don't have a whole bunch of choppy sentences. If I've got a whole bunch of starter words in one line, I need to be a little worried. Or if I have a starting word here and I go three or four lines and I don't have another one, I might want to look into that, right? Maybe make it a little easier for my reader to follow. Um, you will have one place where you repeat words and that's on purpose. Your anaphora, that's totally fine. So your conclusion paragraph should use the same words. You'll notice here, I don't use the same word at all, which is awesome. I can jump down here and go through the same process. The, my, for, he, I, times, another, gross, when, heed, and, knowing, he. Okay, so I'm using he a few times. It might be good for me to add something before one of these. Um, Gary would tell him it was time to rally. I might say like, his favorite thing, or he might, and mm, I don't like that very much. I'm gonna leave that that way. Ooh, I don't love starting with and. So I'm gonna circle this one. Even if right this moment, I don't know what I wanna write. I can put a little note here for myself to change it, right? Um, maybe I'll go with every time they would instead of and. I don't like and as a sentence starter very much. It doesn't work for me. Um, my he's are pretty spread out. Let's see, could I change this one up, do you think, guys? Gary Great, oh, I skipped, nope, that's a comma, we're good. Gary Greatly valued his teammates. Um, taught me the value of team. Hmm. I don't know, I'm just gonna underline those to revisit maybe, because in this moment I don't have a good idea. And it's okay to not know right away, just to know you wanna change something is okay. So I come back here, and you'll, you'll make sure to do all four paragraphs, I'm trying to not take up all of your time. And I'm gonna check off, I did that. I found all of my first words and I looked at mixing them up and I marked ones that I maybe couldn't think of right away and that's fine. And then I looked at the length of my sentences and found a good balance. Next step, focus. Go back and read your thesis, your topic sentence, and your restated thesis. Do they make sense together? Reread your body paragraphs. Does each paragraph stay true to the one character trait for your important person? Ooh, circle that. One character trait per paragraph. Or do they, do, do they seem to talk about lots of different traits? Fix each paragraph to be focused on one topic. 
So for right now, I'm going to look at my thesis. My older brother, Gary, played a huge role in molding me into the adult I am today. And then my first topic sentence. The fiercest competitor I know, Gary sees every challenge through the end. So this is one of the reasons, or one of the ways, he molded me into who I am. So that fits. And then I'm going to go through my other topic sentence and my restated thesis and do the same. And then I'm going to read my whole paragraph. And I have, I read this. This is all about being competitive. So both of my examples are times when my brother was competitive. Um, all of my analysis is talking about how he was competitive and how his competitiveness influenced me, how it made me into who I am. Um, and that's what you're looking for. The next step is cohesion. So it says grab a yellow highlighter or marker or pen or colored pencil. Draw a box. Ooh, I'm going to put a box there so I don't forget. Around the transition words. Um, they're what we use to connect things. So re read the rest of that. You can handle that by yourself. And it has a note about where to look in your English workshop book for help if you need it. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to have a second step here, but this is the only step in yellow. So I'm going to pause here and look at this one. And I'm looking for transition words. Let's see. For example, can help me in transition, which is great. Um, another example, there's a place where I transition some, right? I don't think I really had any up here. So it might help me out to add a couple more transition words. That would be a good thing to do. I could go in and add one in to make sure my story is reading smoothly. I could put something like first at the beginning here so that I have something transitioning into my first paragraph from my thesis statement. And again, do that for all four of your paragraphs. I just don't want to take up all of your time, okay guys? Then I'm going to do part of your, uh, so you can pause here and do this step. Welcome back. Um, part of my paper sticking together is tense and point of view. The paper should be written in first person. So grab your blue highlighter or anything else blue and highlight anywhere you use second person. That's you and your. Now, I will tell you I've read this many times and I have this you right here up in this first sentence. And I'm gonna be honest, I think that for this one rhetorical question at the beginning of my paper to catch your attention, it's probably okay. I think I like it a lot. I think if I change this question, it's going to be awkward. If you used a question at the beginning of your paper and there's a you in it, I think you can leave it. I think that for the rest of the paper, we really shouldn't have much by way of you though. So go ahead and take it out if you find it anywhere else. But opening rhetorical question, keep it. Check mark. Okay, so I have done both of the steps here in number four as well now. Check, check. Oh, make sure that you checked off three and the two steps in three as well. I almost forgot, guys. My bad. Unless it says read aloud. Read your paper to yourself quietly. Think about all the little things you change when we read aloud in our conferences. What word would work better? Did you write something differently than you meant to write it? Catch those now. And I caught one of those earlier when I was changing up how my sentences started. I didn't like how this started with and. But there was something in my introduction earlier that I was looking at. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, this. My brother filled in often. I don't like the order I've put these words in. I think it's going to sound better if I say my big brother often filled in for my dad. Nope, not dad, father, because I think I've already said dad in this paragraph. I don't want to say it over and over again. So I just like this better. I think filled in often sounds a little bit awkward, and I don't know why it is I don't like about it, but I don't, so I'm going to change it. Um, but I also know I can't end an it with in, because in's a preposition, and we don't really end sentences with prepositions. So going through this step as well. So you'll do all of these steps. Totally fine if you paused into them as we went. Also okay if you have some that you haven't finished. If you need to add check boxes for all of them to help you out, do it. I love that. Just make sure that you are doing all the steps yourself. 
Um, when you come to class tomorrow, you must have a new draft of your paper, okay? So when I see you on Friday, I should see this beautiful, colorful, written up, messy copy, and then I should see a new pretty one where all the things that you wrote and highlighted and changed have been changed in the typed version and reprinted, okay? You'll notice this is not editing. Editing's where we fix sentences like commas and um, tense and all those kinds of things. That's not what we're doing here. This is revision. Think of this as the big picture. How do I make it sound better and flow better and more interesting? We'll deal with the technical stuff later. This is revising. Editing is a separate step, okay? I can't wait to see all the exciting things you'll do.